Hello, my name is Aaron Shiflett. I'm a customer success engineer here at Grafana Labs, and today we're going to go through how to deploy our Postgres installation. So I have a terminal connected to my Raspberry Pi, which is currently running a Postgres database, uh, and I have my Grafana dashboard. So to start off, we are going to go here to the lightning bolt onboarding menu, and we're going to select walkthrough. Here are all of our integrations. These are some most common ones. You can search here if you'd like. Here are some other products that we do offer, but today we're gonna to focus solely on Postgres. So I'm gonna click on the Postgres icon. I'm going to hit next to configure service. Uh, my Raspberry Pi is running Raspbian, so it is a Debian based OS. Here are the other ones we currently support. The other distro requires some extra steps. But today we're going to assume we're using a Debian based installer. My Raspberry Pi is using ARM 6. Uh, so all that does is changes the architecture flag here in this script. I have already installed this agent and it is currently running. As we can see here, it is running very well. Um, now we will open the optional configuration menu because this is necessary. You will need to modify this in the YAML file for the agent config once it is generated. So I'll let you all run this and I'll be back with you in a few seconds. Now that that's running, we'll go ahead and see that Etsy Grafana YAML. So in this case, I have updated my data source name to include my database. I have my dummy password, it's localhost, and I'm using a DVD rental database. Everything else you don't need to modify for this is we're not doing anything else. So once that's done, we can go ahead and test the integration and finish installation. Mine is all set up and running, so that's fine. Oh, I did forget to mention, you do need to cycle the service once you've modified the YAML file to get it to pull the new configs every time. Uh, but once you've done that, everything is going well. You can do that, you can hit finish installation, and it's now sending us data, we see all that. Uh, you can set up alerts if you would like to do that, but in this case, we're not going to worry about setting up alerts in Postgres just yet. Uh, but here we can view the dashboard we just created. Uh, mine says folder not found because I've already set this up. We can go to the overview and here is everything in the last 30 minutes of my database for all of them. So I have two databases. We are going to specifically select the DVD rental database which we are using as a dummy. Currently there is one connection which is the Grafana agent using it. Uh, my cache hit ratio is 100%, which is good based on it. Conflicts and deadlocks are tracked. However, in Postgres, that is a little difficult to determine because they handle it very well. Uh, you can get some exceptions, but we're not going to go over that. Um, and then the buffers is also visible. But mostly, we're going to worry about the rows section, which is what most people seem interested in, which shows you all of the stats based on actions per second um, there is a current GitHub issue to rename the rows section of this to actions per second so it is more clear about what we are tracking as this is not rows by itself. It uses uh, specific math to track what this is. Uh, so currently in the last 30 minutes I have returned an average of 14 rows a second. Uh, so let's get some new stats added. For this, I am going to use a script to do a mass insert, which is just inserting a bunch of test data. Uh, I'll show you guys that script just so you can see it. Which is just purely um, insert 20 values with a 
test value. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run that. It will go ahead and it will insert all 20 values. Uh, we are currently polling on a rate of 30 seconds, so it will take a few minutes for it to adjust. Uh, I am leaving all the config as a default just because that is an easier viewing point for you all. Uh, we can see that the queries per second, which is based on commits over rollbacks, uh, is showing a nice spike in commits. Um, and then I have inserted all of them. Let's go ahead and refresh our dashboard just to pull fresh data real quick. And we can see uh, my mass inserted rows. It also returned several because how the insert query works. Uh, we can see that I got my spike in inserted rows. Now, let's go ahead and do a mass delete which is just deleting several of the test values I already have And as we're watching this go through, because this whole database is currently cached um, for performance, uh, all of my ca my cache hit was 100% until I stopped doing something. Um, or, no, sorry, uh, it is 100% pretty much always, which is good for this. We can see the spike. Uh, all the deletes did go through. So let's refresh this data. And we can see our delete actions spiked there. So. It is tracking our rows as it should. Um, and then let's grab some fetch data. So for this, I'm going to log into my Postgres instance. Now we can see that I have my actor database, which is what we're going to use. We will select from actor where the last name is like test. Since I inserted a bunch of rows up here that had the last name test and then some numbers appended to it. Then we have all that data and we will refresh the dashboard just to show that we got our spike in returned rows and our spike in fetched rows. And that concludes the basic tutorial of how to integrate a PostgreSQL database into Grafana.